We're doing basketball in four, three, two, one. And we are back on 90.7, the music FM. What you just heard was Avenged Sevenfold with The Beasts and the Harlot. And it's the j Red Show on 9.7, the music FM. The big issue of a basketball is tanking. <clears throat> is it right? Is it moral? Well, the NBA does not want teams to tank. They want them to try their best to win. And the NBA issued a warning to Chicago Bulls that this week that on rest and healthy players. The team now plans to play Robert Stars, Robert Lopez, Justin Holiday, and it's um so yeah, I mean some of these NBA teams that are in the tank race are not hiding it. Um uh, but um Mark Cuban was um, arrest was fine for a minute tanking and now the Bulls are in trouble. Well, don't hate the player, hate the game. You offer number one picks to, um, I think it's a, I think it's, I think it's garbage. Are the Bulls not allowed to, to, to DNP players, even when healthy? There are several teams that, DN, that do not play players. Everyone knows that they are tanking, so force them to play veterans is really stupid. Also, the Bulls are just two to three games back in the loss column. Two games back in Memphis, they could go still go into the top five to continue to tank. And honestly, they've looked absolutely horrible until last night. They would win last night, but they've looked horrible. I really, as a fan that has bought, um, so what What are your thoughts on tanking? Hit me on Twitter at JRED Show. Is it morally right? But I, I, I agree. Tanking is fine. In sports, you either sell wins or you sell hope. As a Buffalo Sabres fan, the season's dead. All I have to look forward to is the future and the hope that we can get Darlene, an elite defenseman, and that it'll eventually get better. If it wasn't for that guarantee, there'd be almost no point in being a fan. Just gotta hope that for the I mean, yes, tanking doesn't always work. You need smart management. I I hope they have that with Botterill. But you gotta be, but tanking does is the good is a good way to. Given the last place team number one overall pick does help keep, to keep continuity. It helps prevent 10, 20, 30 year playoff droughts. I mean, yes, you need good management. But like he said, I know Mike suggests and, and around the campus, Mike suggested that owners who run their teams to the ground, like Edmonton or the Cubs should be forced to sell that team. Someone asked him, do you think the Bill, do you think Pagula should sell the Bills and Sabres? Do you think he's done a good job with them? Hit me on Twitter at JRed Show or Anyhow. Seven reasons why the Rockets are the NBA's bet team to beat. And one big reason why they're not. They have the MVP in James number one, they have the MVP in James Harden. He's the wire wire favorite. He's only improved his case as the season rolled along. I mean, yes, having the MVP does not guarantee postseason success, but it's practically impossible to win a championship without a top five player. You may recall he's been one way more or less in the same position at some point last season before he started to break down physically. Number two, Chris Paul. To be, it was f fair to wonder if the CP3 Harden combo was would be an adjustment would, would have adjustment problems. We are talking about two. Ball dominant, headstrong players, but the arrangement has worked out wondrously for both players, and they deserve credit for making this transition so seamless. You also tip your cap to Mike D'Anto, who split the, up their minutes so each can run their team to their heart's content with various matchup configurations. As of March 6th, they only have two play; they've only played two and a half times many minutes of power from 1,820 and together 725. Hart, Hart, Paul and Harden have dominated are like dynamite. Their val however, their value their true value comes from having both of them in the flexibility they offer. Having a superstar lead guard on the court at all times given Deontay endless possibilities, and the Rockets are stocked with versatile players. Number three, Daryl Murley knows how to build teams. Murray is about is known for his quasic pursuit of superstars. But he's also has an underrated knack for finding versatile role players. 
He constructs this team in his signature. Is his, his the construction of this team is his signature accomplishment. I mean, look at the team: Eric Gordon, who is a six-man supreme; Clint Capella, r shot blocking, rim running monster; Trevor Azaria, he is the definition of a three and D star. Gordon and Azaria were affordable free agents. They, beyond the core, they have PJ Tucker, Luke Mugabe. Luke Richard Mbaba, uh, Marti so hard to pronounce. Nene bring in the requisite veteran toughness in Moxie. Say what you want about Ryan Anderson's lack of defense. It'll probably limit his effectiveness in the postseason. But his elite shooting range is a key component of their offense. Throwing in the bucket, get it, getting progress of Joe Johnson and Gerald Green, who are picked off the waiver wire, and this erroneously constructed team is the death of death. They beat good teams. They've won 17 in a row, which is an NBA, which is a Houston Re Rockets record. Tadlos wins the cut against teams with running records. It's not an aberration. They are almost as good on the road as they are at home. They beat up the East have a 30 and 8 record against the West. Um, that to put it this way, there are, there's nothing to play about Houston's record. Everything about the Rockets is legit, including the defense. You. Uh, you need a top 10 offense and a top 10 defense to compete for a title, historically. They are a tick behind Golden State in points scored of with per 100 possessions, and essentially tied with Portland for 7 of the points allowed per 100 possessions. Defensive deficiency has been the most glaring point of contention over the last few years. When SS and Houston's championship credentials, you can't win the playoffs without a defense that can get the stops where it counts. Houston's defense is not as stout as some, but there's plenty good enough to reach the conference finals. The scheme is solid, but what makes Houston especially convincing is the surplus of versatile defenders throughout the lineup. They can play big, they can play small, there's always enough shooting on the floor. And their offense is really something. If it wasn't for the Warriors' dominance, Houston's offensive evolution would have been the most important development in the last few years. It may very well be that anyway. Only Golden State can have four star players in their prime, but everyone else can space the floor and play as efficiently as possible. The Rockets have provided the model for others to play in this era. There, and there's no argument to be made that no one should ever have done it better than Houston. Do not concern yourself with the entire old trope about jump shooting teams in the playoffs. Teams like the Spurs, the Cavs, the Warriors have all torn through faulty logic part of recent years. The torch of history is relevant, but only to a point. Everyone knows that Paul and Harden have melted down the playoffs. It could, it could, it could be different reasons. It could be from a sheer exhaustion, as much as anything. Everyone knows that Deontay has never coached a team and they made the finals for many of the same reasons. Riding the one ball dominant guard is obviously difficult during the post during the playoffs. Now we'll find out if the two if two is the correct number. The burden of history is the thing that only if they let it become a thing. With very few exceptions, that also applies to just about every other coach and a superstar in the league. Is Paul any more cursed than Russell Westbrook? Is Deontay's postseason track record really that much of a difference than Thomas Diabolt's? Take away Golden State and Cleveland, every team has questions about how far the core can take them this spring. There's nothing anyone can do until that playoffs starts. While it makes for a fun conversation piece, it really doesn't have anything to do with the 2018 season. Um, those are the reasons that I think the Rockets could win the NBA title, but there was one big monkey in the room, and that's the defend and that's the defending champion Steph Curry, Draymond Green, and the Golden State Warriors. The Rockets are legit contenders because they beat Golden State in three and seven. It's highly doubtful. I mean. They do have, um, I think the experience factor will lead the Warriors to their f fourth straight, to the, f I predict in the fourth straight finals between Cleveland and Golden State. Although, uh, look at Houston's offseason additions. Adding CP3 was a splash, but adding Tucker and Maba are, are, are underrated smooths. Adding all three in the given, and giving them a significant upgrade in the quality defenders. Despite losing Beverly, add in the fact that Meba is a moot and Tucker is, are hitting threes enough to make teams respect them. 35-3 is 6%, although 
both are down from 39 to 40% from last year, providing Houston two, three, three in defensive players to add to the zero that they were lacking last season, and also providing two guys who can play small ball. Azera, Tucker, and Barr are a moot adverse are a moot are versatile. They are switching defenders who can have to hit, hit threes on the other end, which is the team needs to compete with Golden State. Now Houston can run lineups with only defensive liability. Harden even he's been significantly better on defense. Rather than multiple. Like last year when they relied on Mar and on Anderson and Lou and Williams, defensive skis. Unlike last year they when they only had Azera, now Houston has multiple versatile three in defense Guys, as well as CP3 is in the playmaker and burn for the playmaker burn from Harden, and another year from health from Eric Gordon and a continually improve in Capella. They got so much more in the lineup and defensive versatility than last season without sacrificing potential offense. I don't know if this was designed or by accident, but they seem to have all those little strong guys. At times, you'll find James Harden, Gordon, or Paul in a mismatch in the post. And they always seem to hold their own. Hart is really surprising with, with this because he always gets blown by the perimeter. The ability to switch guards on bigger players is the key to the defense this season. Hart has always been a strong defender when guys try to get post him. He isn't just engaged in the perimeter, really. I remember saying the Tony series last year and the Spurs got Gaden Hart or Gagessel on Gessel or Elme and try to have them back in down the rather than just turn them and shoot it over them which is much less of a mismatch than it seems. The way to exploit Harden defensively, in the past at least, is on the perimeter or on the ball. Where there's a notorious ball watcher, the man could be, get a free and relative ease. He's focused enough that this season to be a complete liability. So what are your thoughts? Hit me up on Twitter at JRedShow. Will these guys go through the playoffs? One reason why Paul and I made past the second round with the Clippers was because the second tier players couldn't hold their end of the bargain. J.J. Redick was a sharpshooter in the regular season, but come playoff time, it was frigid. Which is why I'm not big on Philadelphia. Can you expect anything more than from Tucker or Mabai? I don't know if he, if he dis, um, disappeared. He still averaged 6 points per game in 12 RPG. So, what are your thoughts? Who's going to win the NBA Finals? Hit me up on Twitter at JRedShow. I got a few minutes left before my class, so I'll play on time for one more, so a few more songs. Here we are on Twitter at JRed Show. Cut up next is Judith by a per with by a perfect circle. So keep all time point seven the music FM.